Okay, I was dared to do it, so I had to do it, right? <laughs> Will you join me in a word of prayer? Are we supposed to pray with you or for you? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of both, probably. Okay. <laughs> Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for this day, Lord. I ask you to be with us this morning as we celebrate your birth. As we live in the joy that you have blessed us with and the greatest gift that we have ever received. Lord, all of this and so much more we pray to you. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, okay, first, if you want a picture, it's here, I'll... All right. Christmas is a little chaotic, isn't it? I mean, it's a great holiday, don't get me wrong. It's my favorite holiday of the year, but it can be a little chaotic. Take, for instance, yesterday. Okay, yesterday we had four services here at Prince of Peace, 3, 5, 7, and 11. During these services yesterday, candlelight services, we had things like this happen. Uh, someone set their hair on fire last night during worship. Yes. We had a young man uh, in the front right, I don't know who it was, but right when I told people to blow out candles, he did. <laughs> Just as loud as he possibly could, which made everybody here and myself start giggling in the middle of church. <laughs> we had uh, the... Uh, Alex and I and Pastor Carl decided to do something a little different in the setup of how service was supposed to go. And he forgot to tell the bell choir and the choir what was going to happen. And so neither one of them could sync during one of the songs. And they were playing different music, basically, during the worship service. It's chaotic, right? It's crazy the things that happen. But yet, there's a calmness to it. And maybe you don't have things that happen similar to that in your life, but, but maybe you have something like this. Season's greetings. I love Christmas, but then who doesn't? Christmas is great. But the thing I've learned after doing my job for so many years is this. Nothing so great should be easy. And that's where I come in. I'm Christmas Chaos. We've never met, but you know my work. I'm the unseen but ever-present force that stuffs your stockings full of stress and decks your halls with anxiety. I love to keep your calendar full with office parties and school plays, family dinners. I love to stuff your mailbox full of invitations to Christmas decorating contests and, I don't know, gift wrapping extravaganzas. Sure, you could just say no to all those things, but then you'd be a jerk and everyone would hate you. But you don't think these things tangle themselves, do you? Sometimes you make my job too easy for me. Sure, you could have paid 10 extra dollars to get the bike already assembled. You're too smart for that. Ooh. Doesn't mean I'm gonna pass up a golden opportunity when it presents itself. Ah! This is Christmas chaos reminding you that you could take a day off and relax, but then you'd be a jerk and everyone would hate you.
You been there? <laughs> Christmas is at times a bit chaotic, right? But we come looking for the peace of today. So how do you take a story that we've heard a gazillion times before and make it something for you? How do you live in that story? Well, let's listen to it just for a second. A baby. An innocent little child. Not a king, as it looked. Not someone who had a crown and had jewels and gold. A child. An innocent baby born to a poor couple in a cave who is wrapped in nothing more than cloth. Itchy burlap cloth placed in a feeding trough for animals is the savior of the world. When you think about that story, yeah, we've heard Luke 2 probably 100,000 times. But when you think about who this baby is, the only words that you can say, the only thing that hits you is relax. He's here. You see, nothing else really matters in the world when we get to celebrate Jesus. Yeah, you may have gotten what you think is the perfect gift for someone. I know in my house, I try to get that one gift where they open it and they're like, oh! You know, you, you've seen it in the Hallmark movies, or at least my wife has told me about it in the Hallmark movies. <laughs> Right? And you want that one gift. And every year I try to do that. And that's when I come back to this beautiful story. I can't top that. Nor should I ever try. Christmas is about Jesus. And we see this even more in John 1, which we read a little bit ago, it says this. If you'd like to follow along, it's on page 1645 of your Pew Bible. And the beautiful thing about these words is John starts his gospel here. He doesn't start with a grand story or the genealogy. He starts right here. He says, in the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. This word, Jesus, is the creator. He was there from the very first moments. He's seen it all. At the beginning, he knew what happened. And when God sent him down, he was here to finish it. And not only is he the child, but he is the light of the world. You can see in the picture up front here, you have the major on the bottom left-hand side, but you have this big, bright light shining there. I think it's always really cool how God put the star in the sky that everybody was to follow. Because that light shone down on the light. And what does light do? It brightens the darkness and it gets rid of the dark. God has always told us that this is our light. So in the midst of this Christmas chaos of the traveling and the parties, my, my family gets to travel right after church today. We, we, we do the loop, we call it. It's 1,800 miles all the way around. 
It's chaotic. It's nuts. It's crazy. But you know what? It's not about the drive. It's not about the presence. It's not about sitting and eating fruitcake and having way too much to eat and sitting there going after every meal. It's about the birth of our son. The birth of God's son, our savior, Jesus. There's a story that I heard not too long ago that I think puts this into great perspective. There was a man who was traveling he was a businessman. He controlled everything. He was a very staunch man. And he was traveling down the road and he decided to take a shortcut as he was going. And he got lost. Couldn't find where he was. He was on some rock dirt road out in the middle of nowhere. And he's driving down this road and he sees this young boy standing on the side of the road. And he looks at this boy, he stops, he rolls down his window, he says, Son, can you guide me to Dover? Young man thinks about it for a second. Young man couldn't be more than 10 years old. Looks at him and goes, I don't know. Man, getting a little more upset. Well, can you get me to Bridgeton? Young man stops. I don't know. The man is now upset. He asks him more and more places, and the young man responds with, I don't know. I don't know. I got no idea. I don't know. I don't know how to do that. Finally, the man in the car, the businessman, is upset beyond belief. He looks at the young man, stares him square in the eye, and goes, well, you don't know much, do you? What good are you? The young boy stops for a second. Steps back away from the car, looks up, and there's a home on the hill. You can see the fire in the fireplace, the smoke coming out of the chimney, a couple of kids playing in the yard. The lights are on. It's dusk. It's a beautiful sight. He looks up there and smiles. He looks back at the man in the car, and he says, I guess I don't know much. <laughs> I know I'm not lost. And he walks up the driveway to his house. See, folks, we're not lost. We know our path, and our path leads straight to Jesus, and today it leads straight to a manger. So relax. Brothers and sisters, he's here. Wear your fun clothes, your ugly Christmas sweaters, and rejoice, because our Savior has been born. And all God's people said, Amen.